Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala Rasulihi al-Karim. So yesterday we were discussing this sentence, and we had reached the word imma, and I briefly explained it. Let me just re- 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 go, go over it again. So imma is a harfu atf, but it is used in the in the meaning of either. Okay. So for example, here in this Quran ayah, you have Ya Musa, imma an tulqiya wa imma an nakun nahnu al-mulqin. So near here, the magicians are giving Musa a choice. They're saying either you throw or either we will be the ones who throw. So when you have the when you have uh, two or more options, you use the word imma. For example, Allah says here regarding the human being, inna hadaynahu sabila. We have shown him the way. Imma shakirun wa imma kafura. He's either thankful or he's either ungrateful. So the word imma is used in the meaning of either, and obviously it has to be repeated, or uh, it can be used in the it can be used in the meaning of uh, next one. Oh, you have either two immas or you have imma and an aw. You can't have imma on its own. You have imma plus another imma or you have imma and an aw. Like in our example, imma an la tadulla ala ma'nan fi nafsiha. Or in the next sentence, aw tadulla. So you have imma wa imma. So you have imma one, space, 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 wa imma. Like that. Or the other option is you have imma. Space, 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 and you mention your point, and you write aw. So you have an option in using imma. You either write imma at the second option, or you write aw. So you must have two things, and it must be either repeated, imma wa imma, or you have imma and aw. Okay? Yes? So, لِأَنَّهَا إِمَّا أَن تَدُلَّ عَلَى مَعْنًا فِي نَفْسِهَا He's explaining here why there are only three types of words and not more than that. He says here, لِأَنَّهَا لِأَنَّهَا is because. Because it either, imma, it either, the tadullu, the zamir, the, the zamir mustatir in here, here, refers back to the kalima. Because the word either does not denote, here, a better word is denote, indicate, signifies. So either, because the, the kalima is three types, because either the word denotes a meaning in itself. Now, as I said to you before, the huruf jara are two types. This ala is not translated as on. This, this ala is the way the word dalla is used. When you want to use the word dalla in the meaning of denote or to show, you have to use the harafun jar ala. But this ala is not translated as on. You understand that the translation that the word dalla ala means to denote and you translate it in English accordingly. Do not say it denotes upon. That's incorrect English. I'm not even going to English, but I can tell you that's incorrect. So tadullu tadulla ala ma'anan. So either because it, in, it does not denote a meaning fi nafsiha in itself. So any word that does not denote a meaning in itself. He explains this later on. Like for example, if I say fi, is a harf on jar. Why is it a harf? It's a harf. And what kind of meaning does it show? It shows a meaning of in. But the meaning of in is an incomplete meaning. When I say in, automatically you need to know, well, you can only get the meaning of in and position and location when you mention in what? If I say ila, it means two words. But you can only understand the meaning of two words when you have something after it which explains the to which you went, towards which. So fi will only be understood when I say fil bayt. Then you understand, okay, within that location. Ila, when I mention the word after ila, ila al masjid. Then I understand the word of ila. So ila, so the huruf are not able to express a meaning totally within themselves. They need the word after them. So he's saying here, there are three types of words. One word is that word which does not denote a complete meaning. It has a, a meaning. It's not like a muhmal word without any meaning at all. But its meaning is not complete in itself. Fi nafsiha, in itself. Wa huwa harf Meaning, that word which does not have a meaning in itself, it is called a harf. So fi nafsiha. Let's explain the word. Fi nafsiha. Now this comes in Nahwa level 2, you may have studied it before. It's called reflexive pronouns. I can't say for example in English, I saw me in the mirror. Why? Because when you have a pronoun as a subject and the same pronoun becomes the object, you can't, you can't use the word the pronoun again. You can't say he saw him in the mirror or she saw her in the mirror. 
So when the subject pronoun and the object pronoun are the same, you have to use something called a reflexive pronoun. And that is expressed using the word self. So you say, I saw myself in the mirror. She saw herself in the mirror. You saw, your, you saw yourself in the, in the water, your reflection. So this is what you call a reflexive pronoun. So for example, you can't say, Vala mahu. You have to say, Vala ma nafsahu. You want to say, Allah, Allah prescribed mercy upon himself, kataba alayhi rahma. You say, kataba ala nafsahi rahma. Okay? So in, similarly here in our example, you can't say, uh, you can't say, uh, tadullu ala ma'nan fiha. You have to say, tadullu ala ma'nan fi nafsiha. And that is translated as in itself. And I had mentioned before, I think, uh, but I didn't explain it, was kayfiyyatu tarkibi ba'diha ma'abad. So again, the word nafs is used, and the word also here, each other. So, tarkibi ba'diha ma'abad, and how they are structured together along with each other. So these are called reflexive pronouns. So when you have a fa'il and a maf'ul, they're both pronouns, then... Oh, no, you don't have the pronouns. When you have the fa'il and the maf'ul, and the maf'ul be the same as a fa'il, then you have to use the word nafs. You can't just use the word maf'ul. You can't use the maf'ul. You can't say ra'a. You can't say zalamahu uh, zaydun. And make who refer to Zaid. That wouldn't be correct. This would mean Zaid oppressed somebody else. What would you have to say? Zalama Zaydun nafsahu. Okay, I hope that's clear. Yes? Now moving on, so the first word that he did explain was Al Harf. So he's saying that the three types of words, they are three because It does not denote any meaning within itself or any complete meaning within itself. And that's a harf. The second option, أو, Or it shows a meaning in itself. So what he's saying here, Kalima, we describe two types. If it's tadullu la tadullu ala ma'nan, it's harf. And tadullu ala ma'nan, he's breaking it down into two parts. What's the two parts? So until he says here, tadullu ala ma'nan fi nafsiha, the word, the kalima, it shows a meaning within itself, a complete meaning. The second condition now, وَيَقْتَرِنُوا مَعْنَاهَا بِأَهَدِ الْأَزْمِنَةِ الثَّلَاثَةِ وَهُوَ الْفَعْلِ And along with showing and indicating and denoting a meaning in itself, its meaning, the meaning of that kalima is coupled or associated بِأَهَدِ الْأَزْمِنَةِ الثَّلَاثَةِ زَمَانٌ plural azmina. Azmina is what? Uh, time. When English translates this as tense. Tense. Okay, so what do we say here? So if it denotes a meaning in itself and the meaning of that kalima is coupled with one of the three tenses. That's another option. And that will be a fail. So he's saying here there are three kalimas because either it has no meaning and that will be a harf or it has a meaning in itself, complete meaning in itself and it has a tense, that is a fail. The third type, أو تدل على معنى في نفسها or it denotes a meaning in itself ولم يقترن معناها به and به refers to أحد الأزمنة الثلاثة or it denotes a meaning in itself but it does not have a tense أي its meaning is not what do we say here its meaning is not coupled or associated with one of the three tenses and that will be an ism so what he said here if we put it on the table he says here there's kalima. And kalima must be three types. Because it either does not show a meaning in itself. لا تدل على معنى في نفسها It does not show a tense in itself. Not a tense, a meaning in itself. أو تدل على معنى في نفسها It has the ability to show a meaning in itself, complete meaning in itself. If it does not show a meaning in itself, it's going to be a harf. And if it shows in a meaning in itself completely, we can say, well, it either has a tense 
or no tense. Ahadil azminati thalatha. If it has a tense, what is it going to be called? It's going to be called not a verb because here called a fa'ilun. If it shows no tense, it has no tense inside of it. It's going to be called an isam. So that's his logic of explaining why uh, kalima has can only be three types. So at the beginning he says, "Well, kalima tu thalatha tu aksamin." And then he explains li annaha. He's, he promised us not to go into reasons, but he went into a reason. So this, this is his reasoning. That if you look at all of the words in the Arabic language, you will find they fall under one of three categories. It has a complete meaning in itself, or it does not have a complete meaning in itself. If the meaning is expressed totally within that word, or not. If it's not totally expressed, it's called a harf. If it's totally expressed, like daraba, hit, totally expressed. Zaidun, totally expressed. If you look at those words which express a total meaning, they either have a tense in that meaning or no tense in that meaning. If there's a tense in that meaning, you call it a fan. If there's no tense in that meaning, you call it an isam. It's a bit long-winded, but this is how he's uh, explained it. So a summary is, Al-kalimatu lafzun wudhi'a li ma'nan mufradin A kalima is a word which has been coined for a single meaning. Meaning, it's not like two words joined together and each word has its own meaning. No, it has one word and it has an individual, one single meaning. Wahiya mun hasiratun and this kalima is confined to fi thalathati aqsamin to three types ismin wa fa'lin wa harfin and ism, a fa'l and a harf why? لِأَنَّهَا إِمَّا أَلَّا تَدُلَّ عَلَى مَعْنًا فِي نَفْسِهَا وَهُوَ الْحَرْف because it either it does not indicate or denote a complete meaning in itself and that will be a harf أو تَدُلَّ عَلَى مَعْنًا فِي نَفْسِهَا or it indicates a meaning, a complete meaning in itself وَيَقْتَرِنُ مَعْنَاهَا بِأَهَدِ الْأَزْمِنَةِ الثَّلَاثَةِ وَهُوَ الْفَعِلِ So it denotes a meaning, a complete meaning in itself and its meaning is coupled or associated with one of the three tenses and that is going to be fa'il أَوْ تَدُلَّ عَلَى مَعْنًا These are all mansub because there's what from this or it denotes a meaning in itself وَلَمْ يَقْتَرِنْ It is not coupled. Its meaning is not coupled with one of the three tenses وَهُوَ الْإِسْمُ And that is an ism. Yes? Okay, subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanakallahumma, bihamdika, wa nashadu la ilaha illa anta, wa nastaghfiruka, wa natubu ilayk.